Welcome everyone to another Hero Double R video and today we will be doing a first ride on this Aprilia Tuano 660. This is from 2021. It is an Italian bike. It has a 660cc parallel twin engine and it makes right around the 100 horsepower mark. And just to show you guys, we're going to do a quick walk around. I'll also annotate things because um, I don't know the exact specifics of this bike. So I'll put them in the screen or I'll annotate it over the voice. But I'm just going to kind of show you guys around the bike. We have dual Brembo brakes in the front with a Brembo reservoir. And I believe that's a Brembo master cylinder as well. And as well as the rear, we got some Brembos. Um, not braided brake lines though. We do have rubbers, but that's fine. No quick shifter on this model, on this one exactly. Pretty basic, everything else is in there. Starting the bike up, Let's see, turn the key there. The screen dances to us. Pull that clutch in, hit that. There we are. Um, sitting on the bike, I am five foot eight. Um, I can't exactly flat foot it. I can flat foot it to one side though, and it doesn't feel tall. I've ridden tall bikes, it doesn't feel exactly tall, but it, it does, I can't flat foot it. So if you're five foot eight, you probably can't flat foot it. Probably five ten, six foot, you shouldn't have too much of an issue though. Mirrors are on the bars, they're not on the front fairing like usually. This is a quote unquote naked bike, but it has a front fairing. And in fact, I'm gonna get off of it real quick and just show you guys the, the headlight. We got these two, these are the dual uh, running lights right there. And I believe he said you can turn them off with this button or turn them on or something. I'm not sure. So sitting on the bike, the seat feels pretty comfortable. It's really wide and I think that's why this bike is tall. My legs are getting hit and it's easier if I show you. Right here is so wide that my legs, they want to start going down but they have to come out and down. And that's why it's kind of tall. Now the seat height is pretty standard for most bikes. Because of the width of the seat, it's going to be a little bit more difficult for you to get your feet down. The trade-off of that is it'll be a more comfortable seat because it's wide. You'll have a little bit more area for the booty. And if I do sound weird, I am. This is a rental and my helmet is a rental too. So all of this stuff is not my normal stuff. So if I sound weird, I apologize for the audio. If it's really bad, I'll voice over and get my thoughts and opinions. Hopefully it's usable though. Like I said, parallel twin. Pretty quiet, has a stock exhaust. We got cruise control right there. I'm not gonna be using that. Brake levers, everything feels pretty good. All right, let's go. Let's take off, enough talking. Let's do some riding. And if you guys don't notice already, we are in a different area. This is not Massachusetts, this is California. I'm not sure if I mentioned that already, but we are in Cali, so that's different. Stop right here. Ooh, brake's actually pretty good. So the clutch release is really far up at the top. Kind of a little bit different. Naked bikes are really not my forte. I'm more into sport bikes. I don't really like nakeds. But this is kind of like an in-between of a naked and a sport bike or like a super sport because you got that front fare in business. I still don't really view this as a sport, a super sport because you got handlebars and not clip-ons. So you kind of need clip-ons in my opinion to be a real super sport bike. I do like these bikes. They're supposed to be more for comfort and I will say this, I'm completely upright. So my back, I bet you I could ride all day and be relatively comfortable on this bike. <laughs> it got some power. People like scoff at 660 thinking that's slow. Um, this is not slow. And it's funny, the 660 class, it's kind of a new class, but it's also kind of not a new class because you got the SV650, you got the Ninja 650. So, I mean, those bikes have been around for a long time. Yamaha ended up making out their MT-07 and then they made the R7 and then Aprilia made this. And now we kind of have this weird class starting to develop where it's parallel twins, but it's like a sport bike. And the idea of these bikes is they're supposed to be kind of like the new super sports in a way. They're kind of replacing the 600 class because the 600 class is dying. It's just people don't buy them. They're expensive to make. Those inline fours are, they're, they're expensive to make. The parallel twin's much simpler and it's kind of a better engine when you think of it from a business standpoint. 
not just cheaper to make, but most people, a parallel twin is all you really need. These engines will have torque down low, they'll be good on the track. Ooh, that, that clutch release is really far out there. But it, it's, whoa, yeah, woohoo! Yeah, this, this has plenty of motor. <laughs> Wow, me in California. I can't believe it, I'm riding a motorcycle in California. Also, these brakes are fantastic. Uh, what would you expect, anything else? Brembo's. You got that gear indicator, you know I love to see that. You even have a fuel gauge, wow. Like, I don't know why that's such a rarity in the sport bike world, but you got a fuel gauge, so that's cool. The clutch release is kinda taking a little while to get used to, that's okay. Also, this helmet is complete garbage, so I really hope you guys can hear me all right. I'm not sure how much twisties I'm gonna do. I'm probably not gonna do the twisties too much over here, but so far the handling feels good. Kinda goes side to side pretty decent. I mean, like I said, I'm not gonna be able to get the most out of this handling wise. This helmet sucks because it lets in like every little piece of road debris and it hits me right in the eye every time. The transmission, that's something we haven't really talked about yet. The transmission feels pretty good. I haven't had any false neutrals yet. The shifts feel pretty clicky, which is good. Taking off from second gear, you definitely kinda, you can't really do that on this bike as often as you probably can on something a little bit larger, but why would you wanna take off on second gear? I have no idea, just <laughs> something to factor in. Unfortunately, we're going towards the sun, which I hate making videos where I'm doing that, so I do apologize for that. Woo! Some of you guys may ask, how did I rent this bike? And I rented it because I used an app called Rideshare. This isn't sponsored. I don't know anything about Rideshare. First time using it. I was on a trip. I wanted to rent a bike. And I decided that I knew about the app, so I looked it up, tried it. it it works pretty good, no issues so far. I'll report back in post editing if there's any issues with the whole rider share process, but it was pretty seamless to get the bike. The guy who uh, had the bike was a really nice dude and we talked for a little bit, but he didn't waste too much of my time because he knew I wanted to ride and I didn't have a lot of time to ride, so that was cool. I do like being upright, like it, it is nice like to be upright. <laughs> And the sound the engine makes, I mean, for that little tiny exhaust, it does have a decent note to it. The suspension is kinda, it's a little soft. I will say that. Now, this is the Tuano 660, so it's gonna be geared more for this type of urban environment that I'm in. So a soft suspension is not exactly a bad thing. I believe this is ride-by-wire throttle, so it's not a cable, I believe. And I have a big problem with ride-by-wire. Um, another bike that uses the ride-by-wire system is the MT-09. And just my personal experience, I absolutely hate the MT-09's throttle response. It is not linear at all. It's not direct. There's a little bit of a hesitation to it. This was on the older models. I'm not sure about the newer models. But the reason why I bring this up is that this also has a similar system. However, I am pleased to report that I have no issues with any lag and it makes me wonder if this does have some sort of cable that turns a servo. I heard they can sometimes do that. Let's get over here. <laughs> Woo, this thing got some moves. Of course the super sports are gonna be faster um, on the top end, of course, but for what most people ride, this is perfect. <laughs> yeah, the downshifts are nice and crisp, easy to do, easy to rev match, that's good. With a pipe, this thing would be a lot better. We are going to jump on the highway, so I'm kind of curious to see how that goes on a bike like this. Hopefully you guys can hear me on the highway, that'll be another test. Um, I haven't had any issues with wind noise or anything like that. I'm starting to get more used to that clutch. Taking off is not so bad anymore. Uh oh, I'm not even supposed to go this way. Shoot, 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 shoot. All right, let's just stop right here. That's fine, I can actually go this way, but 
Let me just do my phone. Okay. Get that on there. Get that on there. At least that's something. Let's get them all on. All right, boys, we're about to jump on the highway. Let's see how this little bike does getting onto the highway. Getting a little chilly here for California. It is January. I do feel, now it is cold out right now, but I will say this, I do feel a little bit of heat on my right leg. Not too bad, and actually it's welcomed, because right now it is like 60 degrees out, so it's kind of chilly. But I, it's something to consider if you live in a hot area, and if heat really is something that you care a lot about, then, like I said, I, I can notice the heat a tiny, tiny bit. Now, whether or not that's a problem, I can't really comment. Just kind of talking about the bike and what I've noticed so far. Wow, this is probably the slowest turn I've ever taken. That's weird. I'm in first gear and I can kind of feel the bike surging a little bit. Oh man, it's like going up and down. That's kind of weird. Um, interesting. Um, now, most of that's going to happen with most stock bikes. You're going to have some fueling issues. Quick shifter, but you can still power shift or clutchless up shift. <laughs> We're keeping up with traffic, no problem. We're doing 85, and I'm in fourth gear, and I have revs to go. So, and if I want to jump into sixth gear and just cruise, take an arm off the bar, that I do have cruise control here. I'm not sure. I'm not going to mess with that though. The wind's kind of hitting me. I can feel the wind. But it's not like annoying, I guess. I'm not somebody that really complains about wind, though. Wind doesn't really seem to bother me too much. But uh, I do notice it on this bike. Now, if I was down here, maybe it would be less noticeable. Like if I was in the position that the RS660 would be in. If you're somebody that wants to ride and just go to work every day and, you know, maybe hit the twisties on the weekend and you want, and comfort's important to you and you want to ride all day, then this is definitely the one you'd want. But if you're somebody who has multiple bikes, want to go to the track, you don't really care about riding comfort too much, you just want the most capabilities, the most sport-focused ride, you're better off with the, the RS660. Point. I feel totally comfortable on the highway with this bike. Tons of power. Pass everybody on this bike. I, I hit 100 miles per hour with it and the bike felt totally fine. Plenty more to go. You could definitely go way faster than 100. You could probably do 100 in fourth gear. Actually, I know you can because I was doing 85 in fourth gear and I had like 3,000 revs left. Another benefit of being up high like this that I didn't really consider is that I could see traffic so much further. When you're down here more, you gotta take your arm off the bar to really get a good view. But your general view, you have a really good commanding position. Like my head is that forerunner that went by, me and the driver could probably look and kind of like see eye to eye with each other. Maybe he might be a little bit taller, but not by much. Oh, we got some traffic up ahead. And I think I can do lane filtering. I, that's legal here in California. Let's see. Thank you. As bad as the California drivers have been, when it comes to being on a bike, people kind of move over for you. People kind of are chill for the bikes which is nice because in Massachusetts it's almost like you're on a bike and they just don't they like they just want to hit you when you're on a bike they got to make this legal everywhere in the country they really do this is so awesome being able to do this I do it nice and slow because I know some people go crazy filtering through this stuff not me. Look at that guy. He kind of moved over a little bit. Oh, I got a bike behind me filtering with me, dude. That's awesome. A gold wing, believe it or not.
this is so stupid that I'm excited about lane filtering, but it's like, it's like something that we talk about in Massachusetts all the time. Like we always want it to be legalized. Thanks brother. Like people moving over for you and stuff. Like how great is that? Like in Massachusetts, no lie guys, sometimes I will lane, it, lane split, it's totally illegal. I get that in my state. But when I do it, people get like, people will literally like go into me. You see how he just moved over to the left? Like how awesome is that? In Massachusetts, this person right in front of me would move into my lane and try to cut me off so I can't do this. <laughs> it's just incredible, man, like how different it is out here. That would be absolutely a positive of living out here. The traffic sucks, but you can cut through it when you're on a bike. And I'm getting a little bit more comfortable with this bike. <laughs> this is a great bike. It's got that power on tap, fourth gear. That's my gear right there. This bike in fourth gear on the highway, it's like perfect for what you need. Oh man, I don't want it to end. I want to keep riding. I just wish I had a better helmet because this helmet is not good. <laughs> this is great, dude. What a fantastic ride this has been on the Tuano 660. I like this bike. I really do. I don't know what it was, but like riding it at first, I didn't really care too much about it. But as I started riding it more, like I started to really love the way it, it is, just the way it acts, all of that. I highly recommend this, guys. If you get a chance to go to California, come to California, go to the San Diego area or wherever, anywhere in California, and go to Rider Share and rent yourself a bike. It stinks I did not have enough time with this bike. I really didn't. The problem was it was a last minute reservation and also I'm leaving tomorrow. And it was raining the whole dang time I was here. So it was, it, it's nobody's fault. And I knew what I was getting myself into, but I got myself a really good deal. <laughs> oh man, we gotta get off at 15. Not quite this exit, but the next one, I think. Man, if all I would need is my own dang helmet and I could ride all day. I like this bike though. This is, <laughs> what, no, I guess the question is, would this be a bike that I would purchase? Uh, yeah, it would be. It would absolutely be. This is the type of bike that you get when you just want to ride. Like you don't care about all the crap that comes with riding, all the, you know, being the fastest, the best bike, all that. This is a bike that you just get on, ride, enjoy, and have fun. I would love to test out the RS660 and compare it to this one. If I was in the market for something like this and the price was right, I absolutely would. Bravo, Aprilia. Bravo. You did a fantastic job with this Tuano 660. Fantastic job. Yeah, this bike does have a, a it does have a flat spot at right around four to six thousand RPM, where it doesn't really make power. Also, I definitely feel heat on my right foot. Just something to consider if this is a bike that you are thinking about getting. It's crazy. My my perception on speed is so much different than it used to be. I used to just think like bigger the better, and I'm so different now. Like, I definitely don't think that way anymore. And I'm glad I don't, because it's such a dumb way to think. I really, really appreciate these smaller, lower horsepower bikes. And it's not even like this thing is slow, it's really not. It has over 100 horsepower. Like, it's a fast bike in a vacuum. Hey everyone, before I go, I just wanted to give one more note about this Tuano 660. I really enjoyed my ride with this bike. If I were to buy a Tuano 660, the only modifications I would really want to do is an exhaust and a tune to remove that flat spot in the mid-range. Other than that, this bike was a complete treat to ride, and if you were considering getting one and are prepared for the Italian reliability, then I'd say go for it. 
anyway thank you all so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you want to see me keep trying new bikes and making first ride videos then let me know down in the comment section below anyway until next time everyone ride safe Fantasies and we looked at them eleven ways you said no